very good morning and welcome back to another fresh week here week one after a bit of a legendary week we shorted stock markets and it was well worth it obviously whereas uh, obviously as well a week uh, last week ended uh, kind of on extremely shaky grounds if you're looking at the dollar index this one is rising again towards new high points uh, i would say uh, we observe that volatility is increasing and the rise in volatility by the way uh, obviously and it was actually quite a sharp increase uh, based on friday comments from uh, uh, jackson hole from the jackson hole symposium in the us uh, have caused uh, market motivation have caused uh, volatility to increase and this looks again like uh, the market motivation could turn higher our little old style trend line might still stay intact leading potentially towards higher volatility an increase in volatility obviously uh, tells us that stock markets are likely going to stay in shaky waters remain obviously kind of potentially rather subdued and could uh, still uh, turn towards uh, lower levels medium term at least as the the market motivation market indication at the moment suggests that's currently what uh, we might see here what we might face here in the near future as we look at um, uh, current motivation uh, for now also bond yields have uh, started to increase a little and that's uh, obviously the key part which we want to uh, assess here right now on how much more motivation do bond markets have do the yields have because uh, much more rising yields would obviously uh, harm uh, economic development not quite but definitely stock market motivation the uh, inflation story obviously still the uh, ongoing big story right now which uh, kind of really is the a key account here for what might uh, be in to come we see two-year yields uh, have traded or are trading currently near the 3.5 percent level so also from that note uh, we can observe that uh, markets are indeed uh, kind of moving towards a much higher level areas much higher levels as we understand that uh, uh, these uh, markets here um, of course are just seeing the upside potential meanwhile and that's the interesting part we can see though that uh, a bonds uh, bonds demand long-term bonds have started to face uh, a slight bit of an increase again in demand i think on friday despite uh, the offloading of uh, market motivation here we can observe that uh, tlt is starting to push uh, slightly higher um uh, of course uh, bloomberg also stating that uh, in this case inflation is uh, uh, kind of uh, slightly turning lower but are still extremely high regarding of course what we see from central banks as uh, central banks obviously are uh, uh, at the moment facing the uh, worst price shock in decades we can observe that uh, uh, currencies and market motivation uh, is uh, answering uh, thereafter the euro dollar currency pair that's the interesting part on friday and thursday it gave us a bit of a pin bar whereas on friday the market actually started to push slightly lower and i thought okay it looks uh, good for the markets to potentially turn to the downside however i also stated that um, this would be a bit uh, definitely a bit uh, dangerous as uh, every week in all days uh, in the recent couple of trading days the market has turned lower and uh, with the market pushing to the downside i would have expected that some sort of profit taking might kick in uh, you could argue as well and that's what would happening uh, thereafter on friday that profit taking indeed kicked in here the market started to push back towards uh, uh, higher levels and push back towards the upside here in this case where then the afterwards uh, market motivation turns towards the uh, downside so we had a pretty clear price motivation move here a bullish candle and then bearish uh, offset offsetting a candle again kind of a bit of a shorting opportunity to be honest uh, afterwards however we can observe right now that the market motivation now looks set for some further declines uh, in the near future and that's a bit of a tricky part here for now and that's uh, something which i would say it could be interesting for us for this week bearish movement here we have the big support area that's the blue box here which we could extend a bit further now here on monday to the right side 
which the market had retested. And now after the retest, the market might fall back towards some lower areas. The one new thing which I don't like at the moment, and that's what I would would say I fear a bit currently, is a bit the uh, the big uh, the big market selling off here into the supportive area in a way if you would like to call it a supportive area but well into the rsi range here rsi range here where we are trading at the uh, below 30 levels and that could lead us towards some some sort of a, a falling price ranges falling price ranges of course for the us dollar which starts to potentially then uh, give the uh, euro some sort of an upside the point being here is that being oversold is not necessarily uh, causing the market's trend to change to the upside but is considered to be a bit of a warning sign that the market at any point any given point in time might flip back to the upside what if we sell right now on monday quite often the key part also whatever goes down on monday might start retracing back on tuesday wednesday thursday what if we hence sell the market and then face the market or see the market trading all the way up towards the 101, 101, 101.10 area here. That's uh, what could uh, could be the case, which is hence why I would be rather uh, careful in this uh, market alone. The pound itself is trading also towards lower areas and we can observe when comparing uh, the markets here, the pound actually trading slightly weaker uh, to, the, uh, to the US dollar comparing it with the euro. Why that? Simply, I would expect the euro has already fallen substantially and the pound has fallen slightly less, which is why maybe the pound uh, starts to give way uh, right now. Uh, also, we see the same in the Australian dollar, also the Aussie has uh, given way a fair bit uh, whether the market stayed in the sideways pattern the euro stayed sideways the, the australian dollar even was rising here well within and above the 50 moving average that tells us on how much stronger the australian dollar was behaving however of course and then uh, on friday the market really saw this huge uh, sell-off which is then what might lead us soon to the stock markets as stock market momentum and in this case i like the, the short opportunity also in uh, uh, in the uh, Australian dollar, uh, stock markets could be interesting for us uh, to to see further losses, to see further market motivation towards the downside, which in this case might tell us that uh, further motivation here towards lower levels could be the answer. Whether the Australian dollar is like a preview, it's also on a monthly chart still a bit of at a supported range, but we don't have many trading days uh, uh, anymore for this month. We have basically uh, only today's half day and uh, then all the way until Wednesday, until this market is uh, uh, kind of uh, then uh, exiting the monthly candle. So uh, this candlestick could tell us something interesting in the near uh, in the near future somewhat the question of course remains on how on how the economic uh, market motivation will be uh, will be uh, will be moving on and dragging on potentially uh, somehow further of course uh, for the european side the energy push that's the uh, critical part we still see and face and that's uh, uh, to move further to the oil market uh, we are still in our long position in oil and uh, that one is currently at entry looking not too bad to be honest the market kind of fell slightly yesterday it gave us a bit of a slight uh, supporting uh, trend here in this case and then started to push back towards uh, a higher level so it looks kind of interesting for the oil markets to maybe move higher first of all here to me at least the oil price uh, is still in positivity uh, here what the mode uh, is uh, kind of uh, related to uh, on the weekly chart we have traded uh, on top and despite a stronger dollar we've traded uh, on top of the 92 area remember maybe as well i said on friday should the market retrace a bit i would like the markets to give us a closing price above this 92 area a bit of a psychological uh, support plus of course the uh, 50 moving average and now there we go i think the oil price uh, looks uh, quite positive here to gain uh, somehow further momentum to gear up motivation towards much higher levels which in this case is uh, what i would expect to potentially last uh, somehow further so oil market rising canadian dollar not giving us anything much but uh, the Canadian dollar was finding some sort of resistance play on Friday, has ever since kind of fallen a slight bit. Um, it's something to debate maybe if the market is kind of in interesting territory, 
we have fallen from some interesting selling opportunities, just 50 pips to something tradable on the short term. But now the market starts to kind of uh, rise again further. I'm not sure if I want to trade this market at some point here. Yes, I would see that uh, there is some sort of uh, motivation for this market to fall somehow, uh, again, based on what we've said here early on uh, last week. But uh, the other part and the tricky, tricky situation, of course, remains now the same on how much more upside motivation will we see. Uh, the candle we've seen here on a Friday was given us actually a quite a bit of upside motivation as it's an engulfing candle and engulfed the previous uh, three candlesticks and hence upside uh, potential to lead the market further. It could be the case and uh, this upside motivation uh, uh, could of course uh, uh, cause the markets to turn uh, towards higher levels. In this case of course the market motivation here uh, with the Canadian dollar it can be doubted somehow. The uh, dollar Canadian dollar also trading too much towards higher levels. I said on Friday or Thursday we might see and face the markets turn again lower but with it selling off here uh, last week Friday I think uh, this is something we should forget about. We shouldn't really take into consideration also what's happening here right now, unless uh, for the next uh, kind of uh, two, three trading days, the markets turn lower, giving us uh, confirmation of this big pin bar candle that we are staying within this range. And I'm talking about the long wicks to the upside in case you can't follow me here. Whatever is uh, uh, kind of uh, leading us with a huge wick to the upside and then collapsing back again is telling us that there might be something more on the horizon here for some falling prices uh, thereafter. I'm not sure if that's going to happen, but uh, clearly that's what we can observe here right now, that the market is being retraced on the pin bar when being retraced uh, would tell me that somewhat uh, further motivation here for this market to the upside uh, uh, could be seen. And hence, obviously, I would stay out uh, of this uh, position. Let's have a look on the uh, economic calendar. We don't have too much to expect uh, for this week here when we are looking at the uh, uh, general markets uh, market news events here. Um, maybe on Wednesday, uh, kind of uh, Chinese figures uh, by uh, important information, maybe from the employment change number in uh, and from the Australian side. The Eurozone, I don't see anything uh, too much of higher expectations. However, on Friday, of course, we are leading back towards the non-farm payroll figure. That could be interesting. Uh, potentially non-farm payrolls here um, might kind of really guide markets. Last month, as much as I understand, uh, was a big different figure. It was a much uh, higher reading than expected. So we have to see on how this month the uh, figure comes out. But I think uh, in this regard, I would see and say, uh, let's uh, digest market information first and see how we can build potential fruitful trades uh, out of the current uh, situation. Okay, Australian dollar, as I said, turning weaker. Now over towards uh, uh, stock markets and they on Friday have given us really a huge decline again. Remember that uh, we have uh, from a technical point of view, a nice supportive trend line, which was broken. The market boom, is selling off sharply. Comments by, uh, um, by Jerome Powell uh, from the Jackson Hole Symposium uh, causing the market motivation to be again in shaky waters and now I see that this market could read, uh, could be ready uh, for some further downside price action. We'll see how the monthly car, uh, candle ends here for the S&P 500. We'll see also on how the monthly chart uh, and uh, how the weekly chart will end. This is a bit messy uh, maybe here, but how the markets will end uh, their, their month trading. I think we could get uh, quite a few uh, ideas uh, out of this uh, out of this current uh, uh, candlestick pattern. We can observe, of course, that uh, currently these markets have uh, a kind of not uh, giving us anything bullish. It's just a selling off potential, which I see at least from this perspective. The Nasdaq uh, pretty much in perfect shape also uh, right now by leading a further bearish market motivation. Kind of, uh, if we are really not trading beyond the blue line here, resistance place, uh, resistance place, the markets could tell us that further a downside pressure, it could be on the cards and further downside pressure uh, would be the interesting part, which we could see here in uh, kind of, uh, in this case, as a further decline in working capital. So NASDAQ lower, of course, our German DAX also has kind of nose dived again, uh, based exactly off this resistance area. On my managed accounts, I'm honestly still in the 
these trades here. I think, yeah, I'm not in these trades, but we had a nice winning week last week, uh, making quite some profits here. And so I would like to start a bit uh, on an easier footstep here. Um, so far, let's have a look on what gold and silver are doing. And they are actually uh, starting to depreciate again somehow further. I still, as I said, uh, uh, talked about it uh, recently. Uh, it still looks to me well. However, this pin bar candle seemingly broke into the downside. But however, I still see that uh, uh, the uh, metals uh, space here, it could be interesting for us for some medium term push towards uh, higher levels. Maybe not too much in the uh, um, uh, gold price area, but maybe rather on the silver market, we can observe even gold euro is starting to tank a little bit. It's just seemingly the strong dollar, which is uh, again pushing back down on uh, precious metals prices and hence obviously kind of they uh, keep tumbling a little bit at least for now so that's the interesting part here on how much lower will the markets turn we are trading below the 20 psychological support area in silver that might give this market a bit of a push again towards lower figures but uh, i would just wait and see and see that all these low numbers would to me still be uh, places where i would kind of hide happily hide some funds uh, as i believe medium to long term these markets are likely going to uh, push back towards the uh, upside uh, momentum areas and in this case uh, i would still see that this is just simply what uh, i would call as something interesting for me to to seek uh, some sort of long-term entry opportunities long-term entry opportunities at least in the precious metals world anything fresh to trade well oil long that's the trade we are on that's the trade i like to keep in my portfolio uh, also that's to begin with for the week uh, the short opportunities um, uh, for stock markets might uh, present themselves somehow soon. Um, Dollar Jeppy not giving us anything as in terms of a entry opportunity. Well, based on what I've said, this could be an interesting long opportunity once the market breaks higher. Um, that was basically two weeks back, uh, has started to unfold towards first targetable areas for now. So that's done and dusted based in on this regard here. The Euro Japanese Yen starting to appreciate also further also looking quite good so we can see the japanese yen pairs are all more or less moving towards a much much higher levels the pound chappy also starting to appreciate a little bit so japanese yen weakness across the board yet uh, nothing which i would see as something interesting to enter or to trade the markets accordingly as i said i would just wait and see how the markets start to unfold. Let's see, we have the euro dollar on our radar. We keep an eye on the weekly chart, also on the Australian dollar. Just what I fear currently when we enter the markets right now, they pop back and they need anyways, a bit of a wider stop loss. So I wanna wait first uh, and to update you guys, of course, accordingly in the medium term. Thanks for tuning in. That's it from my side. Uh, it's going to be an exciting week, uh, in particular after the stock market weakness seemingly continues. I expect there's quite a bit of um, room for some further information coming today. Guys, see you later. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.